keep it simpler, but you get this surge in demand from D1 to D2. I'm make-believing that sort of corn farmers were, in the long run, equilibrium. I better like to think of the long run as something that firms move towards, but aren't always at. But the price goes from 0.1 to 0.2. The price goes from $2 per bushel up to $4.50 per bushel. And so now, let me walk over to the representative consumer, a rep representative firm that's making the corn. They now see, wow, the price is 450. We're going to make that great this year. Because now we move from zero profits to this much profit. From the price down to the average cost curve and across. That's my their profit. The former farmers who sort of Produce corn that year, did great. Even with the cost increases of producing corn due to petroleum, they made out great. Not the ones who had graphics and such, but the ones who, even with the petroleum cost increases, they made out great that year. Loads of profit for corn farmers. And each individual corn farmer moved from 0.1 here, which would correspond to that 0.1 here, to 0.2 here, which would correspond to that 0.2 there. They produced more. Corn, if their marginal costs were not as steep there, which they probably wouldn't have been so steep there, they would actually have expanded their production even more. That's each corn farmer who was already farming corn right then. As they moved sort of and saw the price increase, they, as fast as they could, sort of if for the spring, if they might wait until next season, if it was the winter, they, they did it right then, they planned for the spring, plant more corn. And then comes the spring of 2008. What happens in the spring of 08? Corn is an industry with many buyers, many suppliers, good information, they all make the same product. And there's the ability of many farmers to grow more corn, or many farmers who never grew corn before to grow corn. So what happens in the spring of 08? We get a big supply shift out in corn. Because farmers say, wow, they're making loads of money in corn, better than anything else I could do. I'm going to grow corn. And so that's what they do. They grow corn. And the supply curve shifts out to perhaps there, S2. And you can imagine when I do this, this is tens of thousands of farmers, maybe hundreds of thousands around the world, deciding to grow more corn as you shift the supply out. Reaching point three here. Now, this representative corn farmer's profits have been cut down to here to here. A little smaller. They still profit, but it's smaller now. You may still have a nice year. So what happens in 2009? This really happened. In 2009, even more people went out to plant corn. Because they saw, wow, they're still making better profit in corn than most of the other things we can do. So, in 2009, even more suppliers planted corn. So many, <coughs> they got all the way to 0.4, the original price. And the original corn farmers were back to Zero profits. And this is the movement that, let me tell you what really happened. They did really plan this much more in the AOA, they didn't plan any more than nine. That part really happened. And you had a movement to a higher price and then back to the original price. It went like this and then like this. And then if we assume, assume that each firm or corn farmer has the same basic costs, what happened with them is they went from 0.1 to 0.2. Point three, and then point four here is back at the same exact place as point one, zero profits. And what I just sketched out there for you is something called 
the long run in a constant cost industry. That would be a constant cost industry, constant cost, meaning each firm has the same cost. Constant cost industry, 